Thank you for joining us this afternoon for a very exciting announcement. I am pleased to be joined this afternoon by Kim Carson, who I am appointing to the position of Director of Racial Equity, Inclusion and Belonging, and who um, I hope will be confirmed by the City Council next Monday night. Since, since creating the position within the administration in the fall of 2019, the REIB department has gone through tremendous growth and taken on numerous critical initiatives to advance equity within our local government and throughout the Burlington community. Before telling you more about Kim and Next Steps, I want to first recognize Acting Director Pitt Kiamanavan, where Pitt go, here she is, and uh, the whole REIB team for their work through this extended transition period. Pitt step forward at a really important and challenging time uh, for, for the community, for the city, and provided department focus and leadership. And the REIB team really stepped up and pushed forward many critical initiatives over the last six months, including hosting the second annual Juneteenth celebration hosted by the city of Burlington, uh, continuing to implement the first ever citywide racial equity training for all city employees, um, and many other ways, including, as we heard just the last time the City Council met, moving forward, the work of the Reparations Task Force. With their skill and dedication, and with Kim's leadership, I am confident that REIB is well equipped to continue the urgent work of ending racial disparities and fostering a sense of belonging in Burlington for all. Let me tell you a little bit more about Kim. So she comes to the city team from Iowa, where she has most recently served as the Director of Education and Human Capital Development for the Iowa Judicial Branch. Um, what that means is that in her position, she led the, the judicial education and professional development for nearly 2,000 employees and provided strategic leadership for diversity and equity initiatives across the agency. Kim brings extensive experience to the role of REIB director in training, in social justice advocacy, and in organizational cultural change. Uh, before her work in her career in the judiciary, I think a really interesting act, aspect of Kim's background is that she worked as a collegiate track and field coach in Iowa and for USA Track and Field. Uh, this comes after a long, successful athletic career in her own right, where she was inducted into the LSU Athletic Hall of Fame and competed at the 1996 U.S. Olympic Trials. In my early conversations with Kim, she made it clear that that background, as well as her professional uh, work in the judiciary, had uh, made her a professional that greatly values teamwork. When I brought forward the creation of this position in my 2019 budget proposal, it was a vision, it was with a vision that to advance rapidly on racial equity issues, we needed a department focused on that issue. We had tried to do this work in other ways and we had decided by that time in 2019 that we needed the focus of having a department. At the same time, we knew that that department simultaneously needs to infuse the values of racial justice and equity across all of the city's initiatives, initiatives, efforts, and management. Leading a department with such a broad and critical mandate is a major challenge. I am very excited to be bringing forward for confirmation an individual in Kim Carson who possesses the skills, education, training, work experience, and values to succeed in this key leadership role. Thank you, Kim, for joining the, the city team. I'm looking forward to, to working together and uh, very excited that you stepped up here. First, I just want to say thank you, and um, since I came here for my interview and throughout this process, I just feel a sense of overwhelmingly feeling belonging and welcomeness here. Um, from the people on the committee to just the everyday citizen that has spent time talking to me when I asked them a billion questions about being here, it's just a community that I feel like is very prime and open for this work and for to come here. Um, I'm at the point in my career where I can really choose where I want to be and what I want to do, and I chose Burlington. And so I'm moving me and my family here. So I'm really, really excited to um, be a part of the Burlington community. I'll be living in Burlington. My child 
my son will be going to school in Burlington and hopefully next fall my daughter to uh, University of Vermont. So I'm, I'm here and committed to not just the community and this job, but also becoming a Burlingtonian, I think is how you say it, <laughs> long term. I have no desire to move, but my son specifically told me he's going to middle school next year and that is not the time to change. So we're here to stay. <laughs> Thank you. We'd be happy to answer a few questions if, uh, if you have any. All right, a good idea. So, you know, it's a sign of your commitment to the area, Kimberly. Here's a Burlington flag pin here. Wow. And uh, here, yeah, I'll pin it, pin it on. Pin it on me. I got mine at the house. going to need a magnet. All right, there we go. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, uh, great, great spontaneous idea, George. Uh, oh, it's one of the mine, all right, missed that cue, I see, all right. You know, best late plans. Um, it's, it's, you know, I feel when it comes off the mayoral lapel, it's, you know, it's got it's an extra special flag. Um, what, uh, we'd be happy to answer some questions. Yeah, so we have um, kept uh, most of the positions that uh, were that have been open. We've kept them open so that Kim can can build her own team. We have moved forward um, towards uh, hiring uh, a new manager to uh, lead the the public health equity work. And I know we had a finalist interview recently, but maybe I, I, I'm not sure if we have a commitment on, on that one. So we, we will be announcing uh, a hire there, but um, I, I believe all the other positions we have kept open for Kim to be able to uh, to fill. I don't know, you want to add anything to the pit in, ter pit in terms of exactly uh, what, um, where, Yeah, just the, the current staffing, exactly. Uh, yes, uh, currently we uh, we still have a couple of our facilitators, and um, we have uh, Blaine Tenseye, who is our strategic manager. Uh, we just hired a new administrative staff, so we're excited about that to help us coordinate our financials um, and a public engagement, a public health equity manager. We starting with us soon, and um, like the mayor said that we definitely, in knowing that we're gonna have a new director, uh, wanna keep that open for, for Kim to vision out how she wants to move the department. Uh, at 14, yes. How many is it currently? There's five. Yeah, so first of all, um, the search was uh, headed up by uh, Karen Durfee, our, our HR director. And Karen, do you want to sure. talk about the process? Sure, I think we have some members of the search committee here today. Uh, Patrick Brown, Louis Cauldron, um, Kara Alnaswari. We thought it was really important to have internal representation. Um, folks that couldn't make it because this is kind of at the last you know, we asked everybody to be here. We had a panel of about 13 people. Um, I think out of all the people, all the interviews we had, we had about six applicants that made it through to the final round. And Kim was our last applicant. Any other questions? How many total applicants? Six. Oh, six, and they all made it to the final round? No, uh, there was, I think five made it to the final round. It was five. We interviewed, we had five interviews um, and uh, two internal candidates, so. Okay. All right. I think the press release has the, uh, the full sure. uh, committee um, uh, that, that participated in the process. Thank you. Mayor, I have a question. Yes. Um, there has since the REIP committee was uh, initiated in the city, there's been a fair amount of turnover, and I believe there was some criticism from 
uh, certain council members and the BIPOC community about how the last director left. And I was wondering if you could talk about how you're committed or what you're going to do to make sure we have our Yeah. So, uh, what we're trying to, what Burlington has been trying to do um, uh, for for a long time, but with extra emphasis, I would say since 2019, um, is ensure that Burlington is a city that is welcoming, inclusive, that has a sense of belonging for all. We want that for the city as an organization. We want that for the community as a whole. We're committed to working towards it. Um, I think there are few communities, few small cities uh, in the country that have made any, anything like uh, the commitment that we have, have made to this um, uh, as a city um, since, since 2019 and then 2020 when we uh, have dramatically expanded our investments in this area. Uh, Taisha Green um, served for, for almost uh, two years and had a very impactful a tenure here and uh, there's many aspects of her work that will positively impact the city for years to come. She uh, fortunately chose to move back to Minneapolis. I tried hard to avoid that outcome, um, uh, but, it, but she is no longer with us. The commitment remains. Uh, we have passed in the, this year's budget. We have continued to commit nearly $2 million uh, to racial equity and inclusion. Um, and I, I'm confident that Kim, after a period of assessment and working with the existing REIB staff, working with the administration and the city council, uh, will create a, a vision for, for moving forward from here that will be very impactful and su successful. Um, areas that I know uh, will be within that vision, because Kim and I have talked about it. We, we are going to certainly continue the internal work that we've made substantial progress on in recent years uh, of creating a culture and a workplace that is uh, uh, very culturally competent, very um, uh, committed to uh, racial equity and belonging. Um, we, it has been a little more than two years since we declared racism a public health emergency right here. There was very impactful work done in the wake of that, ensuring that we had a racially just and equitable response to, to the pandemic and to the economic recovery. I think some of the best work the department has, has done uh, is in those areas. Uh, and we know that we now need to carry that ethic and that success into all of the social determinants of health. And um, we're excited for that work. A third major area, which again, I know will be part of our focus going forward, and that I'm very committed to, I think all you know uh, how much I talk about and focus on housing, I think it is the heart of a lot of our, our social challenges. We know that within that broad uh, challenge of the housing shortage, we have some serious racial disparities, particularly in black home ownership, and uh, I am excited about working with Kim and the team to uh, finally, we've been talking about this for some time, and, and uh, I, I'm eager to bring forward a, uh, a black home ownership initiative that builds on some of the recent policy work at the state level. So we're, we're as committed and well-resourced for this work as ever, and I'm excited that we found the right leader to take the work forward from here. Okay, if there's nothing further, thank you all for being here. Again, Kim, thank you. We'll see you all on Monday night.